JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week February the 22nd until February the 26th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the main event on this week's agenda may be Fed Chair Powell's semi-annual testimony before Congress on, just on Tuesday and Wednesday. In our view, given last week's rise in uh, Treasury yields, market participants may look for hints with regards to QE tapering. On Wednesday, we also have an RBNZ monetary policy decision. We believe that the bank will stand pat and thus all the attention may fall to the language over its uh, future plans. Uh, with regards to the data, we, the most important ones may be the German IFO survey for February and the UK employment report for January. So let's take things from the beginning. Monday appears to be a light day with the only release on the agenda worth mentioning being the German IFO survey for February. The current assessment index is forecast to have slid fractionally to 89 from 89.2, while the expectation swan is anticipated to have risen to 91.8 from 91.1. This is likely to drive the business climate index slightly higher to 90.5 from 90.1. Last week, the ZW current conditions index fell by more than expected, while the economic sentiment one rose by more than anticipated. This shifts uh, the risks for the IFO current assessment index to the downside and for the expectations one to the upside. In our view, a better than expected uh, IFO expectations index is likely to add more credence to ECB President Lagarde's uh, view that the downside risks uh, to Eurozone's economic outlook are now less pronounced, and thereby it may lessen even further the chances for more easing by the ECB. Thus, it may prove positive for the Euro. Now, on Tuesday, the main event may be Fed Chair Powell's semi-annual testimony. He will appear before the Senate Banking Committee, while on Wednesday he will present the same testimony before the House Financial Services Committee. Last week's rise in Treasury yields suggests uh, that market participants may be looking for clues as to when the Fed is considering to begin scaling back its QE purchases. However, we don't expect Powell to add uh, fuel to tapering expectations. At the press conference following the latest FOMC decision, he clearly stated that it's too early to focus on tapering dates. While in a more recent speech, he stayed on the dovish side. He noted that the improvement in the labor market has stalled in recent months. And even if we do see a strong uh, labor market soon, they will not tighten monetary policy solely in response uh, to that. He affirmed that they will keep interest rates at current levels until the economy has reached uh, maximum employment and inflation stayed above 2% for some time for some time, something that according to the minutes of the latest uh, meeting is expected to happen in the years after 2023. With all that in mind, a reiteration of his uh, dovish stance may be the base case scenario and thus if this is the case, uh, we are unlikely to see a huge market reaction. Equities may trade somewhat higher while the dollar is likely to slit uh, slightly. The risk uh, to this event is for Powell to sound more hoggish and start hinting when tapering may start. This is likely to trigger a tumble in uh, equities and a strong rebound in the US dollar. Now, as for uh, Tuesday, Tuesday's economic releases, during the Asian morning, we get New Zealand's retail sales for the fourth quarter, which are forecast to have slid 0.5% quarter over quarter after searching 28% uh, in the third quarter. Following such a rally, a small pullback appears more than normal to us and 
but uh, first it's uh, very unlikely to revive expectations over, over negative interest rates by the RBNZ. During the early European morning, we get the UK employment data for December. The unemployment rate is expected to have uh, ticked up to 5.1% from 5%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has lost 30,000 jobs in the three months to December, after losing 88,000 in the three months to November. Average weekly earnings, both including and excluding bonuses, are expected to have accelerated to 4.2% year-over-year and 4% year-over-year, respectively, from 3.6%. Following last week's uh, better-than-expected CPI data for January, this is unlikely to add to speculation for more easing by the Bank of England. At its latest gathering, the Bank of England pushed back the idea of negative interest rates, which combined with uh, the fact that the UK is going further ahead with the COVID vaccination race, encouraged GBP traders to buy more of the British currency. In our view, the same catalysts are likely to continue supporting the pound, and bearing in mind that we see market appetite staying supported in the foreseeable future, sterling may perform better against the safe havens. We also get Eurozone's final CPIs for January, which are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates, as well as the US Conference Board Consumer Sentiment Index for February, which is forecast to have risen to 90 from, from 89.3. On Wednesday, during the Asian morning, the RBNZ decides on monetary policy. Back in November, this uh, bank decided to keep its official cash rate and its large-scale asset purchase program unchanged, with Governor Andrea Noor saying that domestic activity since August has been more resilient than previously assumed. Quarter four, inflation stay, quarter 4 inflation stayed unchanged at 1.4% year over year, within the bank's uh, target range of 1-3%, to while the employment data for the quarter showed that the unemployment rate dropped to 4.9% from 5.3% and that the employment change rebounded 0.6% quarter over quarter after falling 0.8% in the third quarter. In our view, this data diminishes further the probability for negative interest rates and it even increases the chances for policymakers to sound more sanguine than they did in November. A more optimistic language is likely to prove positive for the Kiwi, which we also expect to stay supported by an improved uh, broader market sentiment. Now, as for Wednesday's data, during the Asian session, Australia's wage price index for the fourth quarter is due to be at least, and expectations are for the year-over-year -year rate to have declined to 1.1% from 1.4%. Later in the day, Germany's final GDP for the fourth quarter is forecast to confirm its, prelim its, pre pre excuse me, its preliminary estimate of 0.1% quarter over quarter, while in the US new home sales for January are expected to have accelerated to 2.1% month over month from 1.6%. Now, Thursday's agenda is relatively light. We only get the second estimate of the US GDP for the fourth quarter, the durable goods orders for January, and the pending home sales for the same month. The second GDP estimate is forecast to reveal a minor revision to 4.1% from 4%, while uh, durable goods orders are expected to have accelerated to 1.1% month over month from 0.5%. However, the core rate is anticipated to have declined to 0.7% month over month from 1.1%. Pending home sales are expected to have slid 0.1% month over month after declining 0.3% in December. Finally, on Friday, during the Asian morning, Tokyo CPIs for February are coming out, with the core rate expected to have held steady at uh, minus 0.4%. Uh, year over year. No forecast is currently available for the headline rate. Japan's preliminary industrial production for January is also due to be released and the forecast is uh, for a 4% uh, month over month rebound after a 1% slide in December. Later in the day, we get the US personal income and spending data for January alongside the core PC index for the month. Personal income is expected to have surged 9.9% month over month after uh, rising 0.6% in December while spending is anticipated to have rebounded 2.5% month over month after sliding 0.2%. The core PC index is, ex is expected to have ticked down to 1.4% year over year from 1.5%. The final University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for February is also coming out and the forecast is for a small upside revision to 76.5 from 76.2. So that's it uh, from me. 
Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. I hope you have a great weekend. I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.